Hey, what's going on? Ryan here with Intersection Records, and we're back from Las Vegas, back from Dead & Company for their Friday night, June 14th show at the Sphere in Las Vegas. We stayed at the Venetian. We did the Dead & Company experience, uh, which was pretty cool. Posters, old photos, uh, Steve Parrish, famous roadie and right-hand man to Jerry Garcia was there. We met him. Uh, he was very cool took his time with everybody that was there to to take pictures with and to, you could ask him questions and um he had some of his edibles out that he was sharing with everybody uh on the cbd side and uh check out steve Parrish on the big steve hour on xm and check out his strand of cannabis products you know, the sphere is, uh, this was the 14th show with the dead, with dead and company. Fish had already been there for four shows. You two's already had a residence. There's been lots of hype about it. It's near the Venetian. In fact, there's a walkway, uh, from the Venetian to the sphere. And it is impressive. It's, you know, it's hard to see. And I, I'm not going to throw up a bunch of video because I didn't want to watch video going in. I don't know why I'd want to ruin the surprise. And I was blown away by, one, the outside appearance and how cool it looks, um, you know, with all the LED changing from the outside. You get inside, the vending areas are really posh and nice. The bathrooms are spotless. This is a, a new venue, but it exceeded my expectations, you know, uh, aesthetically inside. And when we got down onto the floor, now, the floor is not necessarily where you want to be. In fact, we were very close to the stage and it was cool to be that close to the stage, but everything's happening above you. So you find yourself a lot of times staring up into the ceiling and you wonder if the 300 level isn't the peak place to be in the middle of that so that you can see everything out in front of you. Uh, they opened up with good love and which I like to hearing. I like when, Bob, when dead and company does Bob Weir songs since he is the only original singer that's still in the band. Uh, and they followed up that up with a very nice Music Never Stopped, which is one of my favorite Grateful Dead songs. And I thought they were really kind of cooking uh, there. Um, you know, some of the the scenery, I mean, it's, it's crazy. You actually feel like you've left planet Earth at points, uh, and that's not hyperbole. You, you actually have to check yourself that you're not moving, uh, and that everything else is moving at, at, at moments. Uh, it blew me away. I mean, you, you're wondering if there's a chink in the screens, if there's anything that gives it away. Um, you know, it's, it's beautifully done. In fact, I would say this about the show, the theatrics were probably better than the music was last night. Row Jimmy's not a favorite of mine, never has been. Um, especially when Dead and Company does it. I like Jerry doing it only. But then we got the great Black Throat to win last night, which is the first time on tour. And one of my favorite songs from Bobby's solo career that's been incorporated in the Dead's uh, repertoire for years. New Speedway Boogie was kind of slow and long. And uh, it kind of fizzled out, to be really frank. They tried to save the first set with Deal. And I think for the most part, they kind of did some big solos, big solos by John Mayer. Um, you know, Mickey and, and, and Jay Lane are, are, are cruising on the drum kit. O'Teal's always having a blast with his kind of face paint on and big smile. They closed the set with Deal. So a little six song first set, kind of short, a little uneventful. Good loving, music never stopped. Road Jimmy, Black Throated Wind. New Speedway Buggy and Deal took a 30-something minute break, updating you on how long they'll be back. We'll be back in 22 minutes, you know, 17 minutes, giving us some maybe some clues on what they might play by putting some lyrics up on, on this screen. And, you know, the whole inside's a screen. Uh, you, you really have to go see this venue. It, it's It's... It's beautifully done, and you get the impression that the sky's the limit, um, that they're not nearly done perfecting the imagery. 
Some songs seem to have fully fleshed out ideas. Other songs seem to have set pieces of colors and things like that going. Um, you sense that some of the pieces are interchangeable with other songs on other nights because, of course, every night's a different sh sh show. What I've heard is there's a lot of unique stuff going on every every show. So it's not the same things being used over and over again. I've heard that from people that have been to multiple shows. They opened up the second set with Shakedown Street. And again, similar to New Speed, Speedway Boogie, you know, it's a little schmaltzy and it's a little slow and love the shaking on shit. You know, it's, it doesn't have an edge really. And it's, it's frankly a little bit slow, but that being said, help uh, on the way was the next song. And that was a highlight of the evening for me. Uh, into Slipknot and, and the intricate playing there by the band really shows off percussions, really shows off Jeff Schmenti on keyboards. Um, that was a highlight of the evening for me. Help all uh, the way. Slipknot. Cold Rain and Snow. You know, uh, it sounded like they were going into Miracle there, which I was wanting since it's another Bobby classic. But we got Cold Rain and Snow. It was nice. Uh, and then you have China Doll. And this was the first time on on this tour that they've done China Doll, and I love O'Teal. And I'm going to say this. I don't need to see O'Teal sing that song. And I've seen O'Teal uh, Burbridge uh, since the very early 90s in Aquarium Rescue Unit with Colonel Bruce Hampton many, many times. I'm a huge fan of, of O'Teal uh, from the Allman Brothers days uh, through Aquarium Rescue Unit, his brother Kofi. Burbridge. I saw some of the shows that O'Teal did with, as he was a founding member of Tudeshi Trucks. Um, but I don't need the slowness of a, of a China doll. It's fine when Jerry does it. It's quaint and cool, but it's just kind of a low point. There's no energy. Terrapin Station was next. A uh, good version. I like how Bobby comes in and finishes it with inspiration. Move me brightly. Um, it's poignant after John sings the rest of it. And that's one of my favorite songs that ever did. Drums in Space, the last several tours, has been some of the best that I've ever heard. Um, O'Teal played some drums last night. Of course, Jay Lane, Mickey was doing some crazy things with these bars. And there was reverberations and sounds that I heard last night that shook you to your core. To the point... And there were these buzzing things that they they could dial in that I was surprised they were they were they were vibrating so much that I mean I, it was scary at points and the sound in this place is incredible. Um, you know they're piping in cold air sometimes too. It feels like during sections during the halftime we're on the floor and the way that they had the lighting. You know when we first got there before the show it was like you're in this industrial warehouse. And you think that's what it looks like inside the inside the sphere, but they're just putting that on. At, at at set break, I felt like I was in an outdoor football arena, like on a, a fall evening in in Seattle with fog and overcast skies. That's that's the imagery that they they let on in there. And you know, again, the sky's the limit on what they want to dial in as far as aesthetic. Uh, out of drums and space, so we so we go shake that street, help on the way, slip not cold rain and snow, China doll terrapin station, sounds really good on paper. Drums and space, dear prudence. How about dear snooze ends? I don't need, to, you know. Again, Jerry did this with his solo band, and it was nice moments with lots of background singers from the girls in his band. For me, it doesn't work. It's a cover um, of a classic Beale song it was okay hell in a bucket pick things up you know kind of late era grateful dead bobby song i always liked the bobby songs then he had the motorcycle going with it with the with the skeleton on the motorcycle which was a total trip um again if you're at two three four hundred level area you're going to see these visuals much better than the floor but i do want to say howdy to my bandmates uh uh, Bill, Billy, Dorian, and, and, and J-Rock for getting the tickets especially. Um, it was really cool to be with you guys and, and, to, and to have this journey together and see the, this great band uh, up close and personal in an incredible venue. Uh, we were talking all day about Morning Dew being possible. 
they played they played Morning Dew for us, and you know, again, um, a poignant version by Bobby. Um, they didn't. Ha they then prior to set break had like this little photo collage thing that they did that was cool, showing Vince and showing Jerry and showing uh, guys that have been in the band and guys that are no longer with us. Um, and like Keith, uh, Gotcho and Brent. Um, and then they did Ripple, which was a nice way to close things out. You know, the venue, I never experienced lines for bathroom. I never experienced lines for beers. Um, uh, we got in and out of there easily. Uh, it's, it's a state of the art thing. Again, we're in the infancy of what can, can be done there. Um, as far as Dead & Company, the sound was great. I don't think the performance was great at all. And I, and I, and, and I haven't read any reviews. Um, they felt like they were a little bit asleep at the wheel and going through the motions. Uh, and the crowd wasn't really dancing like you'd want to see. It wasn't bedlam like you, you could have at a really big, uh, dancey uh, Dead & Company show. But you know what? Bands are, uh, you know... They're not robots. It, it, sometimes you have good nights. Sometimes you have bad nights. It wasn't a bad night. It just wasn't smoking. Uh, that's my show. Check out my channel. We do shows every day. Peace out. See you.